every single person watching this video, you are gonna stand before God on judgment day. It's a glorious and terrifying thing to think about. The Bible actually tells us some of the things Jesus is gonna say to us on the final judgment. Matthew 25 verse 31, and this might shock you right here. Look at what Jesus says. These are all words in red. So first thing we need to know here, who Jesus is talking to. Second thing we need to know here is that Jesus is talking in parables. And we need to know that parables usually have a hidden meaning. And we need to understand what that meaning is. So let's listen to the rest of the video and I'm gonna unpack this. Um, and you're gonna see where Isaiah completely falls short and how he just does not have the understanding. And there's a reason why I feel he doesn't have the understanding. But let's watch the rest of the video. All the nations, look at this, will be gathered in his presence and he'll separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. So on that great final judgment, everybody's going to get separated. I know we're like, this person's false, this person's fake. Doesn't matter what you think or what you say. There's coming a day where God is going to separate the sheeps from the goats, where we will find who's saved and who's not saved. Because how many of you know, like everybody in America is Christian, every celebrity, I'm a Christian, I'm a believer, yet there's no fruit in so many people's lives, no evidence in so many people's lives, but there's coming a day where Jesus is going to filter out who's who. And look what it says here. Verse 33, he will place the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left hand. 34, it literally says, I'm about to tell you, well, Jesus tells us, but I'm going to share it with you, what he's going to say to some people on judgment day. Then the king will say to those on his right, come you are who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. Pay attention here. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. This is Jesus telling people this on, judge, on the final judgment. Now, these are the people that he's saying did this to him. He's like, you visited me, you fed me, you gave me water. This is Jesus. And this is the final judgment. So this is like end of Revelation, verse 40. And the king will say, I tell you the truth. When you did it to one of the least of these brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. Think about that. Jesus says, when you've helped the least of these, the least of these brothers and sisters, the least Christians, the poor, the widow, the orphan. Doesn't the Bible say, I believe in James, that true and unadulterated religion is taken after the orphan and the widow? Guys, our religion, our Christianity is not just about saying we're Christian. Like, are we actually doing anything? Are we helping people? What does it matter, the Bible says, if you say you love people and then you see your brother in need and you don't help him? And let's be honest, Isaiah, I mean, he looks like he's living in a nice house. It looks like he's, uh, he's doing all right for himself. He's, uh, he's obviously not struggling. He can even have a pet. You know, there, there's people around the world who can't afford to have pets and um, even look after their kids. Uh, so why isn't he help? Why are we not helping more? Like, if you think like this, that that's what you have to do, then where is the actual, the benchmark? Is it like, I help, I did a bit more than those people? Or is the benchmark Jesus? Did Jesus do enough? Of course he did enough. He did more than enough. So do we literally have to be like Jesus? Is it possible for us to ever be that good? Is it possible for us to ever help that much? Let's keep watching this video. What does it matter, the Bible says, if you say you love people, but you don't show it by your actions? So on judgment day, Jesus is going to say and separate these people and say, here's why I'm putting you in my father's kingdom and why you're on the right. And don't get mad at me. This is what Jesus says, because you help the poor. And when you were doing it to the poor, you were doing it to me. Think about that. When Let's just summarize this parable. The sheep on the right, the goats on the left. So the sheep are the good ones, goats are the bad ones. The sheep were doing things to help people. The goats were not doing things to help people. Okay. So all the sheep, they can go to heaven. All the goats, not going to go to heaven. That's it. Simple as that. But there's a deeper meaning to this. Who was Jesus speaking to? Jesus was speaking to Jews. Jesus was speaking to people who were still under the law. And the meaning of this parable was to explain to them that it was not, it's not just about keeping the law by not doing bad things, by not committing adultery, by not stealing, by not um, using God's name in vain. Disobeying the law is also not doing things that you know are right, that you should do by 
helping homeless people, by helping widows, by doing things for your fellow man. If Isaiah was honest with himself, he was literally lying to himself that he thinks that he does enough for his fellow human beings that God's gonna, gonna be like, cool, you can come on the right. It is absolutely impossible. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't help people. Of course we should help people. That's, that's our heart should be helping our fellow man and our, our fellow brothers. But where does it, where is the line where you actually are helping enough? Where is the line where I'm gonna get in over that guy? But you literally need to spend every waking hour praying for people at hospitals, giving away every cent that you make the whole time. And I don't think that'll even come close because let's be honest, our righteousness to God is filthy rags. And the only people who are going to get into heaven is righteous people. So all this parable is doing is explaining how much more you need to do than just not doing bad things. You actually also need to do good things to get into, into, get into the kingdom of heaven. All right. And I'm going to show you something else. So why does God speak in parables? So the disciples ask him, God, why do you speak in parables? And this is what he says. He says, to you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. So parables aren't always straightforward. There's usually a deeper meaning in parables. And he says, this is why I speak in parables, because seeing they do not see, hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. And I'm sorry, but Isaiah does not understand. Everyone, I'm reading the words in red. How else do you interpret this? Another way to interpret it, and that's the correct way to interpret it. God is speaking to Jews in this parable about the law and how they can be righteous. But let's just see how Christians are, are righteous. All right, so we're gonna to go to Romans three, and I'm gonna show you in scripture how Christians are righteous. There's only one way for a Christian to be righteous. It's not by doing more good deeds, helping more people, going to more prisons, um, praying for more sick people, casting out more demons. That is not how a Christian is righteous because all of those things fall under works of the law. The only way that we can be righteous is this. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God is revealed. Apart from the law. Being witnessed by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God comes through faith in Jesus Christ. That's the only way we can be righteous. So the only way we can be righteous, standing in front of Jesus one day, is not by telling him, look how many people I prayed for, look how many uh, look how much money I gave to the poor. Look what I did. It's all about your faith in Jesus Christ. When I'm standing in front of the judgment seat and God asks me why I deserve to get into heaven, all I'm going to do is I'm going to point to Jesus because I know that my works and my self-righteousness is, is useless. It's useless to, to God. All right, I'm going to show you another verse here. Okay, we're going to go to Philippians 3 verse 9. Okay. This needs to put you at ease that there's, you don't need to worry. You don't need to stress one day when you're standing in front of Jesus because because of him that we are going to heaven, not because of us. You don't need to have any, any condemnation. You don't need to have any fear. All right. So look here. So it says, not having righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness of God that depends on faith. My righteousness, I get my righteousness from Jesus. That's it. I don't look to myself. And unfortunately, Isaiah is completely confused. And I'm going to tell you why he's confused, because I actually don't think he has the Holy Spirit to help give him the understanding. He takes it completely literally, and he doesn't understand the context in which things are written. We also need to understand something. Scripture is written for us, but it's not all written to us. Jesus was speaking to the Jews at the time, telling them, where they fall short. He wasn't speaking to Christians at the time. He was explaining to them that they're going to need a savior. And these verses just prove and show that we just have to have faith in Jesus to be righteous. And if we're righteous, we can enter the kingdom of heaven. Uh, it's bold. It's Jesus. And yeah, let's do the work. Do you even hear what he's saying? Let's do the work. I mean, that's how he finishes off his video. Ephesians 2 verses 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and it is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. You have been saved by your faith in Jesus, and God has given you a gift, not as a result of works, so that no man 
can boast. Unfortunately, you're reading the Bible without understanding. And, you know, I pray that you will get some understanding and actually understand the gospel and the good news one day. Follow, like, and all my, and all my Christian brothers and sisters who understand the gospel out there, I'd love to see some comments. Until next time, cheers.